Hi, everybody. Um, in fact, I'm not going to um, talk exactly about that topic, but about this one. No, no, no. Back. Doesn't work. Uh, which is uh, airports are today the physical internet network, and what do we do with that? Um, as you know, there are a lot of um, people in aircraft, a lot of traffic. This traffic is today 3 billion billion and a half passengers a year, and it will be within 15 years between 7 and 8 billion passengers. Uh, in the 15 coming years. Um, the passengers are people like us, like you and me. We are all in a desperate need of mobility. We have to travel, we have to go somewhere, and uh, we are partly back to nomadism. Nomadism is one of the characteristics of the new citizens of the world. So you may understand that uh, with such an evolution of the traffic, um, airports will be the ports, the harbors uh, of tomorrow. Today, all of us, we are on internet. We chat on internet, we exchange information and data, sometimes knowledge and more difficultly, uh, wisdom. But we exchange. We use internet. We use internet also to buy. E-commerce is growing fast. Everybody knows that. But at the end of the day, there must be an application on physical, uh, in physical terms on Earth. And the new network which is the translation, which is the application of internet networks, are airports. I mean the network of airports. When you buy a good, when you buy a product on internet in a few seconds with your credit card, you will not wait three months to be delivered. You want to, you accept to wait 24, 48, maybe um, a little bit more, 72 hours, but no more. This is the main reason, of course, of the growth of the traffic of freight. All this creates a, a network, a network which is the real translation of internet network. And when you look at this network, you see what are the uh, uh, arrows of uh, um, the, the lines of traffic, and you can understand one thing. AT 85% of the business, of the traffic, of the network, is on the North Hemisphere. Often we are talking about the countries of the South. And we say the countries of the South, they are growing, they must come into the, um, the field of uh, growth and, and responsible growth if possible, but anyway, a kind of prosperity. And we speak, uh, we quote uh, China or India, or all those countries belong to North Hemisphere. And when you look at the traffic, you see it's everything, everything on the North Hemisphere, except Brazil, in fact. So we have a real network. This network has uh, a new role, we believe, and we act in this uh, direction, has a new role to achieve at the world uh, level, which is a role, or a role of responsibility. At the uh, Aéroport de Paris, which is uh, uh, somewhat uh, uh, an important firm in airport business, we are, we are on the stock exchange uh, market of Paris, for instance, and we are acting as an engineer and designer for a lot of uh, customers around the world to build airport, to design airport. We are working on the project with Dubai, who, uh, which wants to uh, create a new airport, a small airport of 150 million passengers, which means a very big one. And they are asking us, what can we do to create a responsible airport, a green airport, a zero emission airport? 
So they understood in Dubai that the new airport, the new piece of this uh, network has to be a responsible infrastructure, has to be a corporate social responsible infrastructure. So this network, which is somewhat new, new in the awareness of the citizens of the world, of the responsible of the executives, they begin to understand that airlines is a business. As you know, for developed countries, it's a very bad business that does not make profit. But the important thing is not airline, it is they are the infrastructures on Earth, the new harbors of this coming century, airports. This network has responsibilities, as I said. In my firm, I'm not going to tell you everything we do in terms of environment, sustainable development, corporate social responsibility. In fact, we do, let me say it, we do everything. And we are ranked in the top 100 uh, best firms in the world by the Global 100 Index, which is the leading index in corporate social responsibility at the worldwide uh, level. And we are number one uh, in our uh, business of airports in terms of CSR and sustainable development, of course. But we understand this is not enough. We, as a leading industry in our region of Paris, we have growing responsibilities. We don't have to be only emitting a very low quantity of CO2. We reduced our emissions by 50% in five years. We do not have to be only uh, a corporation using um, an important proportion of share of uh, renewable energies. We are around 20% of renewable energy, renewable energy, which is tremendously important, in fact. Uh, no, we s believe and we understood we have something else to do. And we begin to do it for two or three years. And the reason of my presence today here is to try and search how other airports, other industry uh, in the transportation and tourism field could join in a new network of solidarity, responsibility, social good. We are involved in my cooperation in uh, training, uh, training people living around the airports. We have a youth, young people living around the airports, like uh, in many countries, many cities of the world, living around an airport is to, it means to be poor. So we have a lot of poor and young people around, and we train 2,000 uh, people a year to find a job on the airport, which is one of the main contributors to job creation in my country. Like in other countries, European countries, I mean Great Britain, in Germany, that's the same in, in, in Amsterdam, that's the same uh, scheme that, that is, uh, uh, which is applied. We are involved in the, uh, social housing. We do a lot in terms of uh, a foundation and everything else. But we believe it is not enough. We think we have to act with a more sustainable uh, state of mind. In fact, in international conference, in meetings, it is often sp spoken about sustainable development. And uh, um, I realized uh, that sometimes, I mean very often, um, nobody knows exactly what uh, sustainable development uh, means. So I'm going to try to explain to you what is our own definition. In fact, it's, my, it's not my definition, it's the definition of, of the uh, British traditional, English language traditional dictionary. When you go to sustainable, in the Harap's dictionary, for those who know, you see the different meanings of the word sustainable. And with those different meanings, you have an explanation of what we mean all together, sometimes without knowing it exactly, by sustainable. 
The first meaning of sustainable is to act on the long term. To sustain an effort means to bring, to make an effort on a long term. So the notion of long term is a main issue, a main topic for sustainable development. Second meaning, to be relevant. In front of a court of justice, for instance, you may hear this is not a sustainable point, or this is a sustainable point. It means a relevant um, point, a relevant uh, cause or uh, explanation. Second meaning, relevant, to be, try to reach relevancy, to be relevant, which is not obvious, to be relevant. Suppose that you think before acting. Third meaning is feed, to feed. When you say in English to sustain a plant, it means to bring water to the plant, to bring food to the plant. So sustainable means also to feed, to bring something to a community or to uh, any kind of uh, uh, subject. And the last meaning is a little, bold, little more complicated, but it means in balance, in equilibrium between two uh, magnetic fields, for instance. Uh, it's the same in French, of course. When you say en sustentation, it means the, core, the, the bo a body, a magnetic, uh, a body is in balance between two magnetic fields, positive, negative, and so on. The reach of balance, a reach for equilibrium. So we have four meanings. Long-term effort, relevant action, feeding system, bringing something positive, and balanced. These are the real meanings of sustainable in any traditional English language dictionary. So we try to uh, act in coherence with those uh, principles. Because we believe that airports are today a network of interfaces. We are, in fact, interfaces. Interfaces between what and what? Between the first economic field, the first economic activity of the world, I mean legal activities, not talking about drugs. Legal activities, which are transportation and tourism. That's the first economic activity in the world. On the other hand of the interface, you've got territories, local territories. So a global industry belonging to the number one sector of economy, in contact, in interface, with local territories, local people. And of course, there is something between those two worlds, those two uh, parts, which is called a runway. A runway, something like three kilometers and a half long, is the real interface between those two, I would say, universe those two different worlds. And of course, there is friction. Friction about uh, uh, ecology, noise impact, air quality impact, frictions, positive friction with jobs, jobs creations, job growth. In my country, as you know, today, like in many countries of Europe, there is a big problem about uh, activity, growth, jobs, and despite this uh, situation, airports are the only job-creating activity uh, today uh, in a big proportion in, in, in traditional European countries. So as an interface, airports, member of a network, which is an in physical internet, 
airports have responsibilities. So we decided to come here to join um, this conference, to join OU uh, network, in order to bring something, uh, to bring uh, an idea maybe, to bring a proposition, which is to include uh, a maximum quantity of uh, uh, airport or professional of transportation, professional of tourism, into a new network of social good, a new network of responsibility. As you know, there is the WTO, World Trade Organization. There are a lot of organizations in the field of environment, but nothing uh, uh, really strong nor uh, official at the international level. We believe that we could uh, try to fight to create a, a, a new action in order to promote the creation of a new uh, worldwide United Nations agency for good, simply for good, which is not as simple as that, of course. I would call it responsible economy, responsible economy organization. This is what we need. The WTO, World Trade Organization, is something without any link or any sufficient link, obviously, with uh, responsibility, social goods, uh, 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 respectable behavior, and so on. So we need something else. This something else will not come from governments. They are uh, not able to do it. They are in too many difficulties and links. I think this kind of network, first step, and other step, further step, organization, could come from the social society, from, from the civilian society, as we say in French, la société civile, from all the corporations, NGOs, networks, and everything else, asking, promoting, and one day demanding a new responsible organization, a new responsible economy organization. This is what we believe. This is what we try to do at our very low and simple level to show that the way does exist, that we could all together move further on this path. Thank you.